But the hardest thing is, how do you get yourself to actually pick up the camera on the job sites and do it? It's one of those things where I, I do landscaping and window cleaning. We'll finish up like a $15,000 job, and then one of my guys who works for me, he's like, dude, did you take the before and afters? I'm like, ah, ah. So how do we put this in a checklist where it becomes so important, like Gary Vee says, that you have a media business first almost, and then you have a service business second? Say so myself. He's the next Tony Robbins, guys. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody say all right, all right, all right. <laughs> and turn to the person to left and right and give them a fist bump. Say all right, all right, all right. <laughs> so I want to be talk. I want to talk about building a marketing syndication model into your business. And this is highly important because we're literally in the, the future now. There's a whole new reality and there's a new way. And the people that are doing this right now behind the scenes, they're growing and they're dom dominating and they're captivating. And the people who aren't doing this are gonna absolutely lose and they're gonna not understand what happened. And me personally in my service business and my social media, I'm in a place where I'm being forced into growth. And I want to tell you a quick story, and I'll talk about all the details of how to get this done and how to hire virtual assistants to do the things in your business to relieve you so you have the time to go out and sell and crush it and make money instead of being stuck in all the details and the pressure of feeling like, how do I, how do I market my business and as far as video marketing and how do I get all this stuff online so we create this kind of online empire where you can become basically an authority or even celebrity as small business in your marketplace in your local city where you become a friggin' nightmare to compete with, amen? amen? So every year in the 4th of July, I'll take about 10 days off just so we don't burn out. I give my employees time off, hang out with the family a little bit, and then I get to sleep in. And then after about you know, the 10th of July, you know, whatever that next Monday is, we hit the ground running again and we're just booked. It's like, brrr, pause, brrr. Well, in that time, when you catch up on a little bit of sleep, I know for me, when I finally catch up on sleep and I get a couple days off work, I wake up, the colors are brighter, I'm elated, I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, I, I become back in touch with my identity of who I am at my core and I get excited about all these ideas and things that I wanna do. Next thing you know, I'm back at work and all those ideas kind of go to crap. And for me, that was hiring virtual assistants to automate all the marketing, get all the software going, like the response bid. We use Jill's office and send Jim and all these things. But it's really frustrating when you have to actually dial in and implement the stuff and get it going. It's easy to talk about, but getting it all going and doing it, it's like an endless task after task that can have you up at 11 o'clock at night with bags under your eyes and still not getting the thing done. So I had this kind of awakening last year, and it was about the, your relationship to the unknown. Um, when you don't know something, sometimes you will be afraid to just go out and execute and do the thing, so you just keep learning more and more and more and more and more and more about it because you're afraid to just pull the trigger. Well, last year on the 4th of July, I woke up, I'm like, oh my God, I get it, I get it. I went on upwork.com if you haven't heard about it. There's Upwork and Fiverr, but this is like, taking on a whole new realm, a whole new reality of now where people are doing this all over the place. You can hire virtual assistants all over the world. Well, I went and I hired six virtual assistants in a 48 hour period. I was on Zoom, I was interviewing them, and I was actually hiring three assistants for the same exact position to help with the marketing, to help with the graphics, to help with the blog articles, to market my business. And so I would hire three and I would get rid of the two uh, and no disrespect, but the two that didn't work, because once you get into this game, you, you'll learn that some virtual assistants will say they can do things that they can't, but I learned that when you get 100% committed, that's when the people just show up. It's when you're dabbling and you're trying it, you attract all the wrong people. But, so I went and I hired six virtual assistants, 
And I got them all going, I got them hiring, and then I went and I hired a project manager to manage all the virtual assistants. I had this whole marketing syndication model all mapped out. So we're crushing it, we're getting going, we're gonna launch this whole thing, all the marketing is gonna be automated in my business and I'm gonna be free. It was working, I was so excited. Next thing you know, the vacation was done on 4th of July. Went back to work, right into the hellfire and the helter skelter being swamped. And now I had these virtual assistants and the project manager, they're like, well, what do we do? I'm like, uh, I'll, get, I'll get back to you, I'll get back to you. So I'm trying to do this over and over and over. The team literally just fell apart. And I you know, blew a bunch of money, I felt stupid and I felt embarrassed because I couldn't get it together. And I started going back at night and realizing that you have to hire these people one person at a time to start automating your business, just like hiring an employee. Does anybody here have any interest in doing video marketing in their business or starting a vlog or YouTube channel to market their business online as far as Facebook posts, Instagram? This is an awesome SEO hack to get the video stuff out there and to start videotaping your job sites and showing before and afters and then showing that to your customers. They can find you on SEO, they can find you in blog post articles. You can set up an automated email sequence where now that so if a customer is interested in you as a prospect, you can send them this stuff. They can read about your business and see videos and know you like you and trust you before it even starts. So now they want to hire you versus anybody else. We all know this, but the hardest thing is how do you get yourself to actually pick up the camera on the job sites and do it? It's one of those things where I, I do landscaping and window cleaning. We'll finish up like a $15,000 job and then one of my guys who works for me, he's like, dude, did you take the before and afters? I'm like, ah, oh, ah. Oh. So how do we put this in a checklist where it becomes so important, like Gary Vee says, that you have a media business first almost, and then you have a service business second? Because the people who win are the people who are doing this in this new reality already. I mean, I know that there's people in a room, and there's people like uh, uh, Brandon Vaughn. I, I'm working with him right now on his YouTube channel, Behind the Scenes. I don't think he's in the room, so I can tell you. I'm highly, highly impressed with what I'm seeing because at some point when you realize you can't do it all yourself, you have to like let your ego and your pride down and just say, you know what, I need help and I need to go to the people who have found out how to do this and are actually executing and just go learn from them and do what they did because trying to do it myself over and over isn't working. So I'll just tell you, I'm actually, so we have about 30 million views online and we got 3 million views last month and we had videos going viral on Facebook, on YouTube, all over the place and I'm really focused on cracking the code of how do you get your message out to a broad audience and touch and uh, inspire and change people's lives. Well, with, with YouTube, basically Brandon Vaughn has hired me to coach his team on how to do everything with YouTube and they're just extracting the knowledge out of me. Out of me. And when I come on Zoom, uh, it's him and like six of his virtual assistants. These are very, very intelligent people. And as I'm talking and I'm teaching and I'm on the whiteboard showing them how to do all this stuff, they're actually documenting it in real time and Brandon's right, all right, stop. All right, team, you got what Keith said? Okay, pull out the master checklist, pull up the click up board. And now they're actually documenting and building the systems in real time if what I'm saying, or what I'm talking about, and it's a little bit intimidating because they're actually doing it in real time and I'm watching it happen. So he's approaching it from coming from a place of let's systematize this from the beginning and build it to scale from square one. When you're going out all by yourself trying to shoot the videos, trying to edit them, trying to up upload them, put them on Facebook, take the before and after picture, download all these confusing apps where you're trying to make all this stuff, you're literally pulling your hair out and you keep getting nothing done. And I'm, and I'm saying the answer is virtual assistance anywhere from, and the low, low end, which I wouldn't recommend, like $6 an hour, all the way up to my YouTube ads guy, I hired he's $60 an hour. But you can hire these people for like, literally starting on a cap of five hours a week. So for maybe $500 a month, you can hire a small team of three people, anywhere from uh, Bangladesh to the Philippines, to even in the States, depending on what they do, to help you write all the copy on your website and get it search engine optimized for the Google SERPs, which means it's gonna show up more on page one. You can help people hold your hand and walk you through setting up software or even do it for you to automate your five-star review process. You can hire people to uh, chop up 
all your social media marketing, like if you put a video out, they can go and write a well-written description about it and they can chop it all up and then post it on Instagram every single day. They can post it on LinkedIn, even TikTok if you wanted. I wouldn't recommend that for a service business. And then on Facebook, and then they do, they do keyword research and tags and they'll literally find all the tags and, and everything that matches. So now while you're on a job site working or you're directing your team, you'll look and you'll see leads coming in at night you look on your phone and you see, oh my God, they posted three times a day. And leads are coming in because customers are seeing this stuff. And the thing is completely automated. We're posting, we were posting 24 times a day, 24 posts per day, but it was overwhelming the audiences. They're getting sick of it. But now we're posting uh, about 12 times a day across all social media platforms. It's 100% automated. So what I'm doing is, whether I make the video or I have a videographer, depending on the quality of the video that we're looking for and the messaging, uh, it's been proven that low quality cell phone video sometimes converts higher. But like my friend Quentin here from Digital Dream Studios, my video guy, he was talking about if you wanna have a video on your website that's gonna stay there for a long time, one, two, three years, you're gonna to wanna to invest maybe five grand or more to have a super high quality commercial style video that your customers see that positions you as a super legit company, right? But for the most part with social media, you can make your main video walking around properties, a job site. You don't have to be on the camera, but it's kind of best if you do or find someone on your team who doesn't mind it. But you could be like, hey, I'm so-and-so with so-and-so services. I'm Jim with Jim's Pressure Washing right here in Oklahoma, wherever you're from. And you say the name of the city and talk to your customers like you're talking to them face-to-face. And you say, hey, we got Bob right here. He's pressure washing. You see before and after. Everything's looking really good. If you need a quote, click a link in the description below. It's like literally as simple as that. You are like Billy Mays on the commercials. They're seeing results in advance. And you're not really selling at all. You're just sharing a message. Now you upload that to YouTube. Your virtual assistant takes the link. They take that and they chop it up and they share it on all your other stuff for you. It's almost like when you go to the arcade and you put the ball in the top and it's bouncing all the way down and the bottom tickets are coming out. That's all you have to do is you make that one video per week. And there's this thing, the strategy we use is called circular virality. You don't have to make a video every single day. You don't have to make constant content and stay up all night writing blog posts, articles. You can literally once a month have one idea in your business or one thing you want to promote. This is your promotion and one idea or one special and you make one decent video about that and you get the messaging. Who is, who is our customer? What do we want to talk about? What's our demographic? What's the deal going on? You get that thing ready in advance and now your, your virtual assistants will literally create all the content around it. They can create literally a thousand word blog post article. They can create the email copy. You can get that email to all of your customers and it happens completely on autopilot. But instead of trying to make a whole bunch of content, like I said, every single day, you make one good piece of content and then you spend the entire month just pushing that one message as far and as wide as possible. So you're actually like you're, you're uh, if you're on a, on a 10 speed bike and you're pedaling your ass off in first gear going nowhere, you can switch down into fifth gear, slow down, relax and just make content. It's like a pulse. And now it's being scattered and spread all over the place. Um, does anybody have any questions about the hiring the virtual assistants and how to do it? Does it seem overwhelming? Does anybody here have virtual assistants right now? No? Or Tim Kroll does? If you got a pen and paper or anything, I want you to write down upwork.com and Fiverr. This is super important because the your competition is doing this. If you look and you see some guy who has a phenomenal, uh, your, your competition that's crushing it, they have all the positive five-star reviews, they have a phenomenal website, and they have well-written blog post articles. Why are they showing up on, on the page one of Google? It's because they're investing in this stuff. Either they're doing it all themselves or they're hiring VAs to do it. And my entire VA team might come, cost me $1,500 a month to get all of this done, and now it's completely automated. So you're, um, you can literally step back and watch all this happen in your business. So what's that? I love it. So she was talking about doing testing. That's what I'll do now. Look at something you need done in your business. Instead of hiring a full-time employee and putting on payroll and work comp and a background screen and all these things, you can literally hire a VA and, and say Upwork manages 
all of that stuff for you, and they're just uh, co contract labor. And write all that stuff down and say, all right, I'm gonna set up a budget this month of 500 bucks, and I'm gonna interview the people on Upwork, and I'm gonna literally do a test and hire some people. And it's stressful at first if you've never done it, because you're like, what if this person's gonna post something bad about my business? What if they're gonna mess up? And, and they might, right? I've hired VAs from like the Philippines that have extremely broken English, and they're posting things. I'm like, oh, this isn't gonna work. So I have to go up, upstream a little bit, hire someone for 20 bucks an hour, five hours a week, maybe even two hours a week, and now all the marketing in your business is, is automated. So that's my challenge to you, is to do a test and go and test and see if it works. Um, if you wanna make videos on the next tip on your job sites, there are apps like iMovie Maker and Power Director, and some of the best videos that you can make, I've made videos that have you know, hundreds of thousands of views literally with my cell phone, and you don't need a bunch of fancy camera gear or equipment or anything like that. Uh, for your phone, it's called iMovie. Is that right, Quentin, yeah. for, for iPhone? And then there's this professional video editing app for Android called Power Director Studio. It's literally like $6, and we're putting out videos that look like semi-professional vlogs and commercials, basically with the cell phone. There, when, when, you, when you walk through some of these bigger organizations, you'll see somebody sitting down who is like, I met a, a Greg Whitstock, the pond guy, and he has you know, 180,000 subs on YouTube, and this is promoting his actual business. He's a YouTuber, but it promotes his business as well. And the, uh, he has an entire video team, but there's this one guy sitting at a computer. I'm like, well, what does that guy do? He's like, oh, that's my avatar. I'm like, your avatar? He's like, yeah, well, he's me on social media because you don't have time to do all that stuff. You're being forced into growth. You're being forced into a place where you have to do the most, most important activities and not all the other stuff. And it can feel overwhelming, but it's just the nature of where we're at right now. I myself have become very in touch with my mortality. And I say, time is going by so fast. What can I afford to do and not do anymore? And uh, the next thing I learned that we're doing right now is an employee training system where uh, like I hired a new guy just two weeks ago and he's doing great. I spent three hours just training them on ladder safety, shrub trimming, how we put the tarps underneath the bushes, how we, how we clean everything up, and he'll watch me work, and then I will actually have him do it while I watch him work. And then we'll course correct a little bit until he gets it and he feels com confident at it, and then I'll call over my other guy, Alex, who works for me. Alex, come here. He's been working for me like seven years. You're the trainee now. The brand new guy, I want you to tr uh, teach the guy who's been working for me for a long time, teach him as if he were brand new. So now he's teaching what he just learned and now he feels confident. I literally have watched, I've pulled my hair out for years in my business and this simple employee training system is like, oh, they're just doing it now and I can, I can leave and go sell work and feel confident. Well, the next step now is having these employees actually videotape you training how to do it so you can put it inside of an educational system so now you're duplicating and cloning yourself so you don't have to do this every single time. You can literally have them log in, like I use Kajabi, there's Thinkific, there's all these other apps. You can even do it on a private YouTube channel where you have an entire series of videos, they videotaped you, there's a brand new guy, sit him down in the office, pay him and have him sit down for an hour or two and watch all these videos about your company culture, how you do stuff, ladder safety training, how do you wash things and give them all that onboarding with like the employee handbook and the manual. When he's onboarding, the video process will tune his brain up to exactly what's going on and how to do it. He gets out in the field, he's that much faster, you save your time. That's the power of video marketing. You can literally take a cloning machine and clone yourself a thousand times. If you're sick, laying in bed, throwing up, sleeping, you could be out on a date with your wife or your, your husband or, and you could be on your worst day ever in real time, yet you have 50 videos of you on your best day, and it's, it's a cloning machine of 50 of you, or even 1,000 of you, that are selling to your customers and potential clients and building your brand. How can you, you're literally stamping. So that's what I said when your competition is out doing this stuff, if you're not doing it, you're literally shrinking and shrinking and shrinking by the day. I, I believe it's an emergency as a small business owner to get into video marketing uh, and this is actually old news. So.
this is, this is what I really want to talk about. I had this mental and emotional block about getting inside a response bid and actually setting it up to, to where I'm, I'm calling Kurt at night on Voxer, going, Kurt, I'm really, really embarrassed to say this, and I'm the marketing guy, but I can't figure this shit out. And it's actually really, really easy, but we create these self-limiting beliefs that don't mean anything. It, it, it's so easy. He's like, oh, you contact the guy with our support department. He'll walk you through it. It's so easy. Even though I have response beds set up, set up our pricing structure set up, um, Jill's office, they pick up the phones for our business. So between that and response bid, uh, I don't have any of the video marketing set up. I just have base price structures. It's something that I sat down with a guy at a, a, a previous event where Kurt was at. I'm like, dude, come over here, sit down next to me. I know we just met, but I need you to sit down and help me set this up. He's like, no problem, bro. We sit down for like 20 minutes, I set up my response a bit, and literally uh, every day I have leads coming in and jobs being sold of like, this customer just picked window cleaning, $399, $249, $449. It's basically like McDonald's. They get, they get to pick and choose and, and just sit back and let it happen. Oh, it's, a, it's amazing. It's totally worth it and it's brilliant. And it's another, that's another um, example of the marketing automation of having something that's selling, pre-qualifying, and closing the clients on autopilot so they're ready to book, and all you gotta do is show up and do the job, and then lock them into some type of continuity model. And the more that you can automate that stuff, and I know it's kind of tough in the beginning saying, oh, I gotta pay for all these softwares. So, so that's the next thing. We hired uh, Dan Plata to do all our bookkeeping from Blue Skies Bookkeeping, and uh, I, I paid him to go through a deep dive, and we went back a couple years on all my books for both of my businesses, and it was a painful process and very, uh, a great learning experience. Now we have P&L statements every single month and I can see every dollar, cost of goods sold, admin, um, payroll, work comp, like everything that's coming out and now I can see penny for penny what's going on in the business. And it's made me relaxed to the point where I'm like, oh my God, I have this extra capital that I can invest in marketing or software. The, the margins are actually pretty good. I could never see it before. But when your back's against the wall, you get to a point where you don't have a choice but to invest in these softwares, but to invest in uh, coaching or joining a coaching group or something like that, because now you know you're stuck and you're not going anywhere. And it is true, these softwares actually pay for themselves in the terms of leads. If you're not making the money, you raise the price, raise the deal flow, so you have more deals coming in. And with the 80-20 rule, which like all these guys talk about, um, it just literally pays for itself. How many yeah. hours they spend building your SEOs every single month? Uh, I can't say for my, my SEO guy is also, he does my blog post article writing. I don't know how much time he spent, but I just worked out a deal with him for $400 literally this past week. A guy on Upwork.com, he's like in Virginia, super smart kid. He's like 25 going to college. He understands search engine optimization. I've already studied all that stuff by listening to audiobooks like SEO Black Book, SEO for Bloggers by R.L. Adams. You learn the basis of how it works, then hire someone to make sure they know what they're doing and they're not screwing you over with the black hat SEO tactics. But I'm like, dude, I need my websites reworked. I need you to go through and make sure it's keyword optimized. I need to start a blog and I need you to write a blog. So he's charging me about, uh, what is it? It's $62 per thousand word blog post article. But now I'm like, well, that's good. Can you log into my website with my email and actually write a description about each blog post article and then now broadcast and email that to all my clients as well and send it, publish it. I don't want to do anything. So he's like, okay, for an extra $40, I'll write the email. So I'm paying him about 100 bucks per blog post. We're doing uh, one to two per month. And then for $400, he went through my whole website, fixed everything, and uh, he charged me an extra 50 for some, some revisions. But I think you can, if you're paying under 20 bucks an hour, that's probably too low. The person doesn't know what they're doing. Anything over $50 an hour, it's somebody who is just really busy and they, uh, anything about that, they probably know what they're doing, but you're going to run into people that, uh, like for me, I do consulting, it's $250 an hour if I'm, if I'm gonna talk to somebody, it's just because I'm so busy. So if you find that perfect sweet spot on Upwork.com and you're gonna have to hire a few people, you might be able to get someone for like $20 an hour and for five hours for 100 bucks, they'll go through and they'll update, your, they'll update your whole website and do all the search engine marketing. I think that you should do it. I would do it like a split test. So we do our SEO, I could say in-house, but it's my team. Uh, so go out and hire somebody for $1,500 and then 
I also hire someone for 350 and then watch the results and see what they do. See if they give you uh, monthly reports of analytics of everything that's going on. Are they plugging in uh, pixels and Google Analytics and Google Tag Manager? Are they doing all these things to measure all the conversions that are uh, coming in? But to see what the SEO is doing and how many people are clicking on the page and there's a lot of things that you have to kind of learn. Will this person also for that money sit down and spend the time to coach you on what they're doing so you can learn it so you become empowered as well? That's it. That's it. So there's something called the guardian of the black box is where some virtual assistants, SEO or tech people, they'll develop a, a technology of doing something that they can insert and get into your business but you don't know anything about it and now you're on the hook because if you try to leave them you, they, might, they might take that technology with them or they might take, so you have to at some point learn so you can oversee what they're doing, but, um, and all SEO isn't good SEO. Do they have reviews or do they have other clients that they've done work for that they have? I think, I think yeah, hire someone a little bit more expensive and then go back to that cheaper person and see if you're getting the same quality for your dollar. Because I know people uh, right now that are spending three to five grand a month just blowing it on Google ads when a whole part of their customer demographic is actually right there on Facebook. And they might be able to spend 500 to 1,000 bucks a month to get the same results. The people running the ads that got you locked in as a monthly retainer, they're not gonna tell you that. When you get out of the field and the aspect and you start analyzing that part of your marketing, a lot of these things come clear. And yeah, so any more questions on that? Yeah, so if it's, if it's a software that you're buying and you're paying a subscription, you should be able to go in and pull your own reports or find a way to get that stuff. But if you're hiring a company or someone to do it for you, I think, excuse me, they should be furnishing you, you with reports as part of their responsibility so you're not changing their diapers. My friend Eric, he's got like a $6 million roofing business. He, he pays a company, he's paying like 3,500 a month to this company and they're running all his ads and stuff and his website is banging, like he is the best of the best. And when something goes wrong or something doesn't make sense, he's literally on the phone with them immediately. Hey, what's going on with my website? We, I'm driving down there right now, what do we gotta do? And they're like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> they're, they're all over his stuff at top priority because he's a good client, but he holds them accountable. Sometimes it's hard to have the difficult conversation to hold the person accountable, but immediately email, pick up the phone, have that learning conversation. So he who can afford to spend the most to acquire a customer wins. Only makes sense if all of your marketing is super tight, you understand your customer demographic, and the psychology of the customer avatar. So if you are spending money on marketing and these companies, if they're sending leads to your homepage, your website, or your Google, if everything that they're seeing when they land on the website is consistent and, and congruent with why they came there, and it all makes sense, and it's, it's triggering what we call like a hot button. It's like basically when they land on your website, they should not want to go anywhere else. They found like, they, they're like, this, this is what I need. I don't want to go anywhere else. I found my solution. You're providing it, and they want to pick up the phone and call or get an instant quote or something like that or get a bid. And so it's tough to say when you say that none of them work because I think it's like it's on a gradient. Some of them work and some of them work to different extents. But if you ask like someone like a Bobby Walker, he takes this thing in house with, okay, he takes this thing in house where he's developed a this customer retention and five star review automated process system to where now they're constantly saying. Hey, Mrs. Jones, we want to make you so happy that we earned your positive five-star review on, on Google. They've created, customer, they've created a customer referral engine where they've brought that in-house. So where he probably doesn't even have to spend that much money on marketing compared to getting as many positive five-star reviews as possible and knocking the socks off every single individual customer so they're going and bragging about you online. So therefore, you create that referral engine. If you create that thing first inside of the, uh, at the grassroots level, organically inside of your business, then once you go out and spend money on marketing, it's kind of like you're pouring gas on the fire, right? So if you're pouring gas on something that isn't going to ignite or explode, 
You get it organically first, and then you pour the gas on it, and that's where it really takes off. But it's like you're putting the cart before the horse because that's what we've been told or thought that we need to do. But it's really just learning the marketing and the copy on your website and making sure that everything is super dialed in. When people come to your website and your social media, they should feel like this is this is exactly what I want. Everything is matching and congruent. Uh, your name, address, and phone number is all consistent across all the sites. You have a plugin so they can see the five-star reviews and customer testimonies direct, directly on the website. When all that happens, and now that's working and converting, then spend the money on marketing and advertising. How does a VA know what to copy or content to put inside when they don't know your business? So. Uh, over the winter, I was obsessed with trying to figure out uh, the YouTube ads platform all by myself. And I've been banging my head against the wall with this since 2016. I spent $800 on this super amazing online course. I spent 40 hours going through this thing and taking notes. And I'm, and I'm actually starting to build it, but I can't get it going. And, and this guy named Parker Walbeck, uh, phenomenal mind. He said that he was paying, he paid like $35,000 to some marketing company and they weren't getting him any good results and they couldn't figure out why. So they had to take it completely in house and do it all themselves. He said, because any agency you hire, unless they specialize specifically in dealing with companies in your industry, they don't really know your customer avatar, which is the perfect customer. They don't know the psychology of your customer and they don't know what to write. So they're kind of like just having to do research and guess. Like Jill's office, for instance, they have uh, tons of clients in our industry. So when the virtual receptionist, pick, they pick up the phone, they've had thousands of conver conversations similar to that. So they know exactly what to say. They know the lingo, they know it, they're part of it. But how do they know what to write? If I go on Upwork.com, I'm actually typing in keywords like for landscaping or pressure washing. Has this person written articles or done SEO for companies like mine before? And then I'll go and I'll see examples of their work and I'll do my research. I'm like, boom, that's my guy. Or boom, that person's a liar. So you do the research on the person, kind of a background check of their work. And then you can find that person who are like, oh my God, this is such a blessing. I found these couple VAs who are, and, and then it also feels good almost in a, like your ego. It's like you feel like you've reached the next level now because you have all the stuff uh, going. And they're called copywriters. So what I do is I make a video and I send the video to the article writer. And the article writer I hired, I'm not going to tell you his name, but he has an entire hunting blog. <laughs> And I, I, dude, I spent hours researching and I found this kid who's like, in, like I said, in college and his website is banging, the, the articles, everything, it makes perfect sense, it's congruent, it's linguistically conversational and it's SEO optimized. I'm like, he's my guy, I'm gonna do whatever I have to do to hire him and pay him and retain him and now I'm one of his best clients. And so you go out and you find that person who does the right stuff and has the skills and they'll already know what to do. That's not your job, that's their job. That's why you hired them. And just because you don't know how to do the stuff doesn't mean they don't know how. There's people that are phenomenal experts at doing these things. I mean, you could literally just send them your website, make some videos, and they'll come up with some stuff that's like blows your mind. Um, there's this app I use, it's called Jarvis.ai or conversion.ai. It's, yeah, Jarvis. So I'm paying monthly for this subscription software that you put in all the stuff about your business. Uh, Rojan Moser, anyways, these kind of brilliant minds in the internet marketing world, these guys put together this copywriting software, conversion.ai. You, you gotta check out this website, uh, free shout out. And so you type in some details about your business as much as you kind of logically can, and there's all these scripts and you can, like if you want it to be in a witty tone or a conversational tone, you just click a button and it goes and it spits out a bunch of copy. Well, copy is basically salesman uh, ship in print. And now you read this, you're like, oh my God, this is incredible. Like I, I would have paid somebody $300 to write this, to put this on my website. You might have to go and adjust a couple things, but now you have this beautiful copy and it pulls from the greatest copy minds in like history of people that get paid $40,000 to write one ad for Macy's that converts and sells millions of dollars in products. They use that type of technology in this. So you have this at your hands for $30 a month. And I, I just think it's super cool. So all this stuff that I'm talking about, it gets to a point where it flips. 
And now it becomes easy. It's hard at first, but then it becomes easy. I have a course called uh, The Business Marketing Blueprint, and it teaches you how to automate all the sales and marketing in your business, like Bobby Walker's in the course, and he talks about that whole five-star review f process. It's keithkelfus.com forward slash BMB, or if you go to my website, keithkelfus.com, just click on courses, you'll see it, The Business Marketing Blueprint. It teaches you how to market your business like basically everything I talked about today, it goes inside and the course is like a hundred bucks and it teaches you how to actually implement all the stuff. That's exactly what I wanted to know. And you can get a free guide I have. It's the, my seven steps to marketing your business. It's keithkelfus.com forward slash seven steps. And it's an entire comprehensive guide that's totally free that shows you how to do all this stuff. So you can get that for free first if you want it. Yeah. Yeah, those are my courses. This is a... The videos that I make and the views that we get, my heart is centered around inspiring people. We've helped start uh, 10,000 businesses, prevented suicides and everything. I mean, I cry sometimes before and after making these videos. I love changing or helping people change their lives because I was a guy living, you know, broke, homeless, and sleeping on people's couches. I came from a family of drug addicts and alcoholics, and um, I had a, a lot of rough times in my life. And I, I didn't believe in myself at all. My self-limiting beliefs destroyed me for years. I used to look in the mirror and just think I was a piece of shit. And this month is the first month. Um, I know I'll be doing $56,000 in revenue and I might hit 61,000. And I was like, that's just revenue, it's not like net. But I was like, I used to think that was impossible for my life. And it wasn't until I let up of control. Oh. Thanks. <laughs> but, oh, thank you. But the only thing that got me to this point was taking off my own handcuffs of my old identities and giving up control and trusting the process and going out and finding other mentors and letting go. And it's a tough process. So I'm all set. I'm done. Thank you so much. All right, all right. <laughs>